Hi guys. I probably sold most of you your backpacks, so uh, hello again. We're gonna learn how to fit a backpack, and we're gonna learn how to pack a backpack. And from the start, what I want to talk about is the different kinds of backpacks. Most of you probably have something like this, an internal. Uh, if you grew up maybe 20 years, started hiking 20 years ago or so, you probably grew up with something like this, which is what I used to use. It's very similar, but very different how you pack these kind of things. We want to start with external. How many of you use an external? One guy. That's it. And two? All right, Steve. <laughs> the idea with an external is that most of the, you have a lot more options of where things go on the outside. This comes from a time when everything was much heavier, much bulkier. Uh, <coughs> this sleeping bag was probably twice or three times the size of just this bag here. So the idea is you can save a lot of space on the inside by shopping things on the outside. With an internal, like these guys here, as you can see, it's a lot cleaner on the outside. The only thing I have is just for example, a bedroll on the outside. Um, the idea being that all your gear is better off going on the inside. It's closer to your body, which helps carry weight better. Uh, a lot less straps and just dealing with things in general. Whereas this, you kind of need to put things on the outside. So, <coughs> what a backpack does what it's meant to do is carry all your stuff into the woods. That's the whole point of these things. And its job is to transfer all that weight onto your hips. Your, your hips are really good at carrying weight. They do that all day with your torso. Your shoulders, not so much. They really hardly ever carry anything. So the idea is that we put all the weight on our hips. The shoulder straps are really just there to keep the pack from falling backwards. Kind of from being a fanny pack. So all the weight pulling you down should be going into your hips down here, and all the weight pulling you back should be going onto your shoulder straps. That's ideal. The, the closer we can get to that, the better. Um, and to be as efficient about that as possible, what we want to do is have all the heavier stuff. Usually it's water. Water is usually the heavy. Hopefully it's the heaviest thing you're carrying. So we want to get that as close to your back, as close to your spine in the middle that we as we can get it. So a lot of bladder pockets, if you guys use a, a bladder, like a camelback or something like that, the bladder pocket's always right in the back, as close as the first thing besides the foam to your back, so that we have all the heavy stuff as close to you as you can get it. All the light and fluffy stuff kind of fills around that stuff, or the heavy, like food, water, not much else that's that heavy, fuel maybe, so the light stuff, like your clothes and your sleeping bag and all your extras, um, it's better to put that kind of stuff far, far as Far, farther away from you than the heavy stuff. So as close as we can get to that, the better. Um, if you do need to strap things on the outside, a lot of these packs have, like I said, ideally everything is on the inside. Look just like this when you're hiking with it, maybe with a water bottle or something on the outside. They give you a lot of options usually on how to strap things on the outside. Typically you're gonna need extra straps like this, like a, and again, extra is a good example. They give you a lot of these, uh, these loops, so you can need a cliff or uh, what's better is to strap things like this on the outside. And you see those everywhere on these kind of packs, these little loops, that's what they're for. It gives you more options if you can't fit everything on the inside. Ideally you will, but if you need to, like uh, your tent poles, they're very long and awkward, you know, so to put those on the inside is kind of a hassle, it brings you more hassle than it's worth. So what we want to do is put those on the outside. You'll notice that most of where things go, there's no right or wrong, it's really whatever's easier for you and just whatever will get you back on the trail quicker with less effort. So things like your bedroll, something like this, <laughs> which uh, it's so long and tough to deal with on the inside, it probably wouldn't even fit in an external, honestly, something like this. That can get strapped on the outside. It's just easier that way. Uh, and it's usually not that, that heavy either, so there's not that much of a loss to put, things, put something like that on the outside. So to avoid putting things on the outside, what I would recommend is going with a pack that's maybe a little bit bigger than you think. So this is a huge pack, this is a 75 liter pack. I barely sell anything this big. But it demonstrates that if I could, actually in, inside here is all gear, we'll get to that in a second. Inside here is another bedroll, um, a much smaller, more modern, inflatable one. Um, and I would always rather get something a little on the big side, have a little bit more space. You just don't have to cram play Tetris on the inside to get everything to fit, you know what I mean? It's a lot easier if it just have, if you just have more space to work with. And that goes for if you guys use stuffed sacks at all. 
I would really recommend getting something a little on the bigger side that will fit your sleeping bag inside a bigger stuff sack than the, the one it came with, which is usually, it's just so, you know? It makes it a lot easier. And that's kind of the theme with these guys, is just, uh, as long as the pack does what you need it to do, and you fit everything inside, like all the heavy stuff as close to you as you can get it, the rest is just whatever's easier for you guys, whatever, whatever makes the most sense for where you are. And there's a lot of variables too. So around here it rains, it rains a lot. So I would want something like um, my rain gear to be pretty accessible. And on these packs, it really depends on the pack um, where your access points are. Typically, 99% uh, of the packs I have work like this. You have the top, it's just one big sack, so you have access from the top. So here I would put things like um, demo anything I would need during the day. Basically this represents everything I would bring on a day hike. So things like um, my bug spray or my rain jacket or maybe an extra fleece, extras and things I might need during the day depending on the weather, the conditions. Like I don't know if I'm gonna need bug spray. I don't know if I'm gonna need my head net for bugs or anything like that. So I'm gonna keep it somewhere up top or on a pack like this, which again is like 99% of these things on the bottom. Also gives you an access point to the main compartment to all your stuff. So, things I want you to get to quickly, as close to the bottom or top, depending on your pack. If you have only an access, only access to the top of the pack, that's going to go on top. If you have access to the bottom too, sure, your fleece or your raincoat or any kind of bug protection or any like your anything that you might need during the day, your water filter, you know, whatever, whatever you guys use. A lot of this is up to you. I don't know how you guys hike. I don't know what you do when you're out there. If you stop and have a big elaborate lunch and you need your stove and all this food and everything like that, at some point during the day before you make camp, then sure, you, you won't put that on the outside or on the, on the top or the bottom somewhere you don't have to dig through to get to everything. Otherwise, really, you don't need anything in there until you kind of need everything in there when you start making camp. So right at the bat, the next thing I'm gonna say is have your shelter somewhere where you can get to it quickly. Here, let's put it in the stuff sack up here. It's a couple pounds. It's not the heaviest thing in there. It's not the lightest thing in there. But um, God forbid, I get there to my campsite and it's raining. I don't want to be digging through this pack trying to get to my shelter. I want to get that thing up as quickly as, quickly as I possibly can. And uh, then I can go inside and deal with my pack, get out my cook set if I want to do that in the rain or anything else. Typically, the last thing that I need, and you know, everyone's different, is my sleeping bag. So that kind of either goes here, I think I demonstrated, it's on the bottom, which is fine. That's assuming that this pack didn't have access. If you don't have access to the bottom of your pack or any other part, just put the sleeping bag as far away from what you need as you can. You, there's, I can't think of a reason why you just need to get to your sleeping bag. You know, it just it doesn't happen. Um, after that, so we have outside, this area, you can't really see it. This was invisible, it looked like there's big one big stuff sack here of just my clothing and that kind of stuff. Very lightweight, very pack of uh, malleable, and I can kind of fit that around all my other gear if it makes some kind of awkward shapes. And in the middle, clo again, close to me, I have my food, my water, uh, my cook set. All this stuff is the heaviest stuff I'm carrying. Um, like, I like I said, I had a bladder, it's right in the back, right as close to me as I can get it all five, six pounds of water as close as I can get it. Nothing else should weigh five or six pounds. So I want the heavy, dense thing right up against my back. Not too low, you, if it's too low, we'll talk about this later, you feel yourself kind of leaning forward, and that's to put the weight up higher. Uh, likewise, if it's too high up, you carry weight better when it's high up. It's, you're actually, you'll feel, if you put weight really, really high up, you it doesn't feel like it's so pulling your back. But good luck ducking under a tree or making a, any kind of maneuvering, really. You're just very top heavy, you're very wobbly. It's kind of a problem with these externals, too. With the external, you can even see that. They don't give you a whole lot of bottom stuff. Most of it, most of it is forcing the weight really up high, which is really efficient, but uh, it wobbles. If anyone's used an external, you know, it, it feels like a, you're wearing a box on your back that's wobbling back and forth. The idea with an internal, they're much more integrated to you. It's almost like you're having a hunchback and just stowing all your stuff in there instead. It's much more like a part of you and it feels that way. So 
So I have everything in these little stuff sections for demonstration uses. Um, like I said, this is my tent. You can see the stuff sack I use is way bigger than I really need. Um, it came with a stuff sack, probably about that size, or even smaller, something like this, which I spent two minutes trying to get in, and then I could put it in my pack, which uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't fun. I don't want to do that in the morning when I first wake up, you know. So it's a lot easier to just ditch stuff sacks all together. But if you want it, your it's probably dirty or wet. The idea is this protects your other stuff, so your your wet whatever or dirty whatever. Is not getting your other stuff dirty and wet or whatever. Um, but it's still a lot easier to deal with something like this. Yeah, it's a little heavier. It's, just, it's worth its weight and just time you'll save just stuffing it and then restuffing it. Um, like I said, everything is just whatever is easier. That's usually the right answer. Whatever works for you and is just the easiest way. Um, here's another bed roll. This is definitely something I don't need during the day. Um, Unless you have something like this, like a foam mat, and you use it as a seat when you have lunch, or you just need a foam mat to sit down and take a break or something like that, there's really no reason to have it accessible at all. So I just kind of put it with my sleeping bag. I'm going to use those two things at the same time. This is my sleeping bag, my example sleeping bag. That I, just, you know, I took two minutes and stuffed it in this thing, uh, which made this really awkward shape, just kind of hard to, hard to deal with again. Um, I should have gotten a bag like this. It would just made everything easier. It's still gonna take up whatever amount of space it takes up, but it's just so much easier to deal with when it's in something and have to cram and cram and cram for a few minutes just to get it in a pack, a bag that I'm gonna put in another bag. Um, so a lot of this stuff, you're, you're better off either putting it in loose, just honestly, half the time I'm not using a stuff sack for my sleeping bag. I just wanna stuff it in there. It's easier. Uh, anything that's wet and dirty, I'll put in a bag like this very rarely, um, just to separate it so it doesn't get my other stuff dirty. But in general, I hardly ever use stuff sacks. If I do, what I'll use are things like this, just normal Ziploc bags. They're water resistant, waterproof enough. I can see what's in them. I don't have to color code my stuff sacks. They're cheap, they're really, really light. Um, and they're compressible. I can pretty much get a vacuum seal by just squeezing these things. So I'd, I'd much rather use something like that than like a traditional stuff sack. Um, unless I just need something way, way bigger than that. Uh, do you have any questions or anything so far? You know, what's up? Um, about the uh, the size of the backpack. Mm -hmm. I, my son has one of those Vault 75s and they say the Vault is for men mm -hmm. and the Viva is for women. And that's the biggest is 65 and you're saying get sort of a yeah, so how, how, how do you? Well, it's tough to know what you need without having all your other gear first. In fact, most people, when you come in and try to buy a backpack, they must ask you how much weight you're carrying. Right. Size wise, what size do you think would fit all your stuff? If you had to imagine your stuff in a duffel bag, what size duffel bag would that be? Um, it's tough to get all these answers if you, you don't know, if you don't have your gear already. So it's, it's, it's one or the other. Usually, most people I would recommend you get all your gear first and saying, that's what I have to deal with somehow. What's the best pack to deal with that? It, yeah. I do have another question. Yeah, yeah. I see all these really neat Osprey um, cases yeah. that seem to be nice, like rectangulars. Yeah. We've been using the stuff sacks, mm -hmm. which are all sort of, I don't know, they're sort of lumpier. Yeah, I got Can you. Can you just talk about the pros sure. and cons? I mean, you're not going to find gonna... these too much. In fact, uh, these aren't for sale or anything. This is just kind of what I use to stuff backpacks to, to weigh them down for people to try on. Um, in general, I try to avoid these awkward shapes. Even stuff sacks, it's a, it's a cylinder essentially, oh. which is just kind of tough to deal with a lot of the time. It's, which uh, which are? Uh, just anything that makes a shape, like a, a dense right. shape like this. I'd much rather have something like this, which is loose, and floaty, and I can kind of tuck this into all these little nooks and crannies that, are, that otherwise these things kind of eat up. They eat up a lot of space. You have all this extra space oh, so to deal with. Are fine, They're fine. I would just have them looser than you think. Just don't try to cram everything and make this really dense okay. package. There's not much of a point to it. It's going to compress in the pack anyway. And it's not going to make this awkward shape. It's just tough to stuff other things around. So yeah, in general, shapeless is almost better than having like a, a cylinder or a square or a cube or something like that. 
I'd much rather have things lofty and just be able to stuff them in and cram them in and be done with it. Anything else? Any other questions? Are you going to talk about cat covers? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay. Um, let me talk about that now. So there's a lot of variables out there. You, it depends on where you're hiking, if it's the desert or if it's super foggy or it's raining or if you don't know what's what's going to do. Um, no backpack that we sell or that really exists is waterproof. They, they make them, but they're very rare, they're very expensive, and they don't last that long. The, the waterproofness doesn't last that long. So instead, what we do is we cover them with something, either uh, a pack cover, like something like this, which is really like a shower cap. Imagine like a shower cap for your backpack. The idea is it covers everything that's exposed, right? Except the straps in the back. So you can still wear this thing, but all the water, all your gear is under this, this uh, cover. And it doesn't get wet, because none of these backpacks are waterproof. The material is very water resistant, it can handle a drizzle for you know an hour maybe, or whatever, but it's gonna soak through all the stitching, all the zippers, all the buckles, all that kind of stuff, it all, it's all gonna seep through eventually. So instead we use a, a rain cover. There's other ways of doing it. Uh, a really big poncho that covers you and the backpack. Done. I use an umbrella. Uh, I cover. I just hold, walk around with an umbrella in the woods all day. Um, covers me and the backpack, and now I don't need a rain jacket. I don't need a pack cover. It, like I said, it's, it's whatever whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong here. It's all whatever you want to do. Um, so yeah, and the pack cover is definitely something I would probably want to put top to the bottom somewhere I, where I can access it quickly. The singles for my rain jacket or any other kind of elements, element dealing things like this. Whether it be bug spray or my head net or anything like that. I kind of love the bowl into like my, if I would take it out for a day hike, I would probably want it to be accessible in my pack. That's kind of how I think of it. Uh, on your little sheet you'll see how it says like, there's a little diagram that says like shelter, day gear. That's kind of what I want this one to do. If you're gonna bring it on a day hike with your knife, your compass, your map, first aid, uh, your rain jacket, rain gear, I kind of lump that all into, I'm gonna bring it on a day hike, so I want it accessible in my backpack, whether it's on the top or the bottom, wherever your access points are, or in its own pocket. Most of these packs are pretty much, this is a very typical pack nowadays. If you had to buy one new, you would find maybe water bottle pockets, some kind of a lid, a uh, rain pocket, something like this would be good for that stuff, that, that lightweight, small, I need fairly often, or maybe I'll need it fairly often kind of stuff. And that's it. Most of these packs are pretty uh, pretty simple nowadays. Externals, on the other hand, have a ton of pockets. Um, there's, there's a lot of packs that do, but just because they don't, don't feel like you can't get to your, your little things. You just pack differently. Pack accordingly. Pack how you're going to hike the day. And a lot of this comes with experience. It's, it's really tough to know these things. Well, I'm saying might be totally wrong the way you do things. I don't sit and have like a big lunch where I'm cooking and I need my cook set available, I need my stove available, all this stuff I need available. I just don't do it. I'll usually just make a sandwich or just snack on candy bars all day. A lot of people like to sit down and take a break for an hour, hour and a half and just cook and eat and or take pictures and all that stuff. Your priorities might be a little bit different than mine. You might need different things higher up. Um, any other questions so far? So, uh, yeah. One thing I didn't talk about were uh, compressions, compression bags, something like this. Just kind of go back to what I was saying, how it's gonna make this long and awkward, or just an awkward shape to deal with. And all the work that goes into using these things just to put it in another bag. It sounds good, it sounds like you're gonna make things really small and compressed, but really you're just making a lot more work for yourself and you're just making this awkward shape that's just making more work for yourself, it's tougher to deal with. Um, if you're gonna be strapping things on the outside and you just wanna uh, decrease your profile, sure, sure, I can understand using something like that, but if you're putting it in the pack, you'd be really surprised how much little, how little space this, I know it looks huge, but really, I can compress this thing down naturally just by putting it in the backpack and fitting it around all my other gear. Or maybe I don't even have to. Maybe I have plenty of room in there and I just don't have to deal with all this stuff. It's, it's easier that way, so I'll do it. As long as all the stuff is close to me, as long as it's all 
strapped down tight and it's not dangling and bouncing around or shifting around in my pack. You know, uh, I don't really see much of a wrong with it. It's, it's, that's easier, so that's what I'll do. You know, after you've been out for days and days and weeks and weeks and every day you're packing the pack and you're unpacking the pack to make camp, you start to really like uh, not care as much about where things are and how you did something and how you did this. As long as it's all in there, I'm good to go. It's not shuffling around, I'm, I'm on back on the trail. Of course everyone's different, you might disagree, but that's how I do things. And I, uh, I've been doing this all my life and this is just how 20, 30 years of doing this has shaped me. I'm just trying to be lazy. I just don't want to deal with it. I just want to put everything in there and go. And the closer I can get to that, by getting bigger stuff sacks like this, um, or just not dealing with the straps on the outside, the, the better, in my opinion. Um, tent, I see you have your tent poles protected in this uh, yeah. roll. But so, what if you have like one of those accordion, you know, the perma rest? Yeah, so like, uh, this is just like a little example, as you can see, you point out, I have tent poles in here wrapped around on the outside. And I strapped on the outside of my pack. Uh, we always worry about, you know, if they break, you're in Sure, definitely. Tent poles, I kind of lump in that, like, it's a really awkward kind of category. It's, I'd have to make a lot of accommodations for these to fit inside of my pack. A lot of tents now, by the way, are really small. I, don't, I carry a tarp, I don't even deal with poles anymore. So it's a lot easier. I kind of, you can see, I, uh, I follow the easy path. But if you're dealing with poles like that, or you have a different kind of bedroll than this, or an inflatable one, I don't want strapped on the outside. I'm, gonna, I'm afraid I'm gonna poke a hole or something in it. Um, one thing I would definitely say, like these by themselves aren't that heavy, usually tent poles. Like if you say your tent weighs four pounds, these are probably just around a pound or so. I don't mind so much strapping these, maybe on the side here, or if you have like a, an accordion style, putting that here and then just putting the bowls on top, that's fine. Or if you can somehow fit these in, maybe long ways obviously on the inside of the pack. It's whatever's easier. A lot of people will keep them together, the tent, the, the tent poles, like the body of the, the tent and the tent poles together. If that's easier for you, do it. Um, I just like to stuff everything in here and stuff it in my backpack and then just put these on the outside a water bottle uh, pocket or my bedroll down here. You can use the lid too. A lot of people will put things underneath the lid like that, which uh, I don't really like to do. I gotta deal with it every time I wanna get in my backpack, but you can uh, just do whatever you want. Yeah, it, it really is just whatever's easier for you. Whatever works, whatever's easier. As long as nothing's like dangling or bobbing around or shuffling on the inside of the pack, a lot of these packs, all of them, will have a, some kind of a compression. Um, so after you stuff this all with all your stuff, you uh, you can compress it and get everything as close to you as you can get it. You can carry weight much better when it's closer to you, obviously. Um, I don't do it either, but a lot of people do. Um, any other questions or anything like that? What's up? Um, can you go over what the different, like, do you have uh, straps, like low control straps on your shoulders and on your hips and how you might be able to use them in terms of controlling your sure. load? Sure. Um, so like I said, everything, the idea with all these packs is it transfers wherever weight is in here into your hips. Uh, this kind of more goes into how to fit a backpack and all that stuff, which is very, very important. Um, I don't think anybody brought their pack to get fitted, but if you want, we can fit you to whatever, have a mirror, you can see how a pack's supposed to feel. Basically what you're doing, let's talk about this now. When you put the pack on, it's always good to have everything loose. And the way you do this is when you take it off, loosen everything. You always want to start with the hip belt. This is the foundation of all the, everything of this pack. If this is in the wrong place, or it's not tight enough, or something's wrong with it, everything's wrong. <coughs> so we really need to get this squared away first. And what we do, it feels really awkward at first, but you want this to be pretty high up. You put it across your belly button, uh, maybe an inch or so below, but in general, the higher the better within reason. And you can you can feel that it just kind of sits on your the bones of your hips. 
called the iliac crest, but it's just those bones in your hips. You want, to, you want to pretend that's a shelf and have it sit on the shelf, not like around so much. When there's weight in this thing, it'll, it'll sit down where it wants to, but I don't want to put this thing too low and just have it slide and slide and slide and all the weight goes in my, in my shoulders. So pretty high, awkwardly high. It's gonna feel weird at first, but your shoulders will thank you later. Um, and after that, we kind of work up on my little diagram thing here. You see these uh, on the left-hand diagram. Uh, it shows a one, two, and then a three and a four. That's kind of the order you do these things. And you can follow along the fitting. Like I said, we always do the hip belt first. And the idea is the next thing we want to do is kind of bring the pack in close to us. So we want to get these straps under your shoulders. You'll see a lot of hikers kind of do this. Where they throw the pack up. That's to get the hip belt up high. And also to get it to hit your back. You want to see the people touching the, your back. So when it is hitting my back, I just kind of get rid of whatever slack is left over on these bottom straps. I don't want them tight. I definitely don't want them even snug. Snug is too tight. Just slackless. I feel it's against my back, and I still have play room. So when I lift my shoulders up or my arms up, I'm not pulling the pack up and putting all the weight in my shoulders. I have room to like maneuver and do things, you know? So it's very important that we do this first. We kind of work up from there. We do these guys next. Just kind of pull them down and back behind you until they're snug at the tightest. And then you have these behind you, which are tricky to deal with. The easy way is just to follow these straps up. You'll just kind of hit these tabs. You just keep going, keep going. And so you hit these tabs. When you pull them in, you kind of see what that does. I can feel what it does, but you can see what it does maybe. They kind of bring everything <coughs> else. They pull everything in close to me. And they raise the shoulder straps up. They kind of pull the straps up here. So if I like crank down on these guys, really what I'm doing is I'm pulling the straps up like this. You see all this space up here, look at it. But also I feel it under my arms. I'm, I really don't want to feel much here. Really I want to feel everything down here. So I, I can loosen those a little bit so I'm not pulling me up so, so much. And if I pull these- How do you these, loosen those once you've tagged these up? These guys, if I loosen or- The ones in the back. Once all these kind of work the same way. You see these tabs, if I just pull the tab, It'll, it'll just loosen like that. Oh, okay. So it's the same way back there. I just kind of pull them back. And I kind of like pull this almost to loosen them like that. So like that. If I tighten these too much, what these do is they do the opposite. They pull everything down like that. So I feel a lot of more pressure on top of my shoulder blades. And I feel these too tight, I feel a lot more underneath. So really, I just want to, these kind of work together. I just want to balance the bottom and the top straps here. It's all okay. But honestly, you'll be fiddling with these things like every hour anyway, so just get in, start going. You'll figure it out later what, where you want things, how, how tight you want things. Tight's really a bad word. Even snug, like I said, is kind of too much for these guys. I want them, I want them loose, I want them floaty. And then the sternum strap, this, <coughs> really all this does is keep these from falling off of me. So right there, it's tight enough. I can even have it looser. It's tight enough. If I need this to really make the pack more comfortable, I probably got the wrong pack. I probably got something that wasn't cut for me. I'm doing this, which I can feel is just not as comfortable as it should be, just to, to compensate for that, that cut that, that, that wasn't working for me. So honestly, you don't have, ideally you wouldn't need this unless you, you're you scrambling or something, these are actually falling off of you, which doesn't really happen that often. Um, you put the pack on, like I said, it's a lot easier to put it back on and to take it off when everything's loose. So what I want to do is I want to kind of loosen everything in the opposite order that I did everything. So I would loosen this or get rid of it. Then I would loosen these guys. And the idea is we want to keep the weight, uh, we want to keep the weight on our hips while we're doing this instead of just like dropping all the way instantly off onto my shoulders. If you're carrying a lot of weight, it matters. If you're not carrying a lot of weight, it doesn't matter. But uh, so the, we want to do this in the opposite order just to keep as much of that weight on our hips as long as we can. And then when everything's loose and easier to take off again, I can drop the pack. And now that it's all loose, it's kind of ready to be put back on and re-tightened and re-snugged again. You don't want to have things like set already. It's just good practice to loosen. You know, what's up? Um, I have a quick question. So is there... Is there a difference in terms of body types versus certain backpacks that are good for those body types? And how do you prevent, as a coworker of mine, so her backpack is like fitted here, mm -hmm. but it's like collapsed. 
in this middle section, like she can't get it to to tightly form to her back. What like is the that? The foam is bending. I'm not sure line. what it is, but like, oh. what can account for that, and how can you compensate for that or correct it? There could be a number of things. One thing. Uh, what makes these a little bit different than externals is the frames are actually pretty flexible. They, they bend and they, you can see it. I can't do that with an external. I bet if your friend was wearing an external, she wouldn't be having these problems. I think the, how much weight is she carrying, you know? It's like 30, 30 pounds. The, the back, does, there's not a lot of structure in the back. It's more yeah. of a day pack. It's usually a case of just the pack's not designed to carry the load you're carrying. So what happens is it buckles. It, it bends itself like this. Um, and that's bad for a lot of reasons. One, you can see it pushes everything away from you, which is never good. And also, it's, it's bending, so it's putting all the weight on your shoulders. Your shoulders are basically what's stopping it from bending all that way. So, uh, it could be a number of things. It could be a fitting thing. It could be just the wrong pack for her. The pack's just not, there's no frame, there's no structure, there's, there's too little of it. So it's just not doing what she needs it to do, whatever she needs doing. It could be a number of things. It's tough to say when they're not here like that. And that's a structure thing. She's putting way too much low weight into a pack that's just uh, not designed to carry it. Any other questions? Yeah, what's up, Steve? Um, maybe a related uh, question would, or an uh, uh, issue that you would go through is torso length. That yeah. might have something to do with this a little bit. So all these packs, they either come in different sizes, like small, medium, large, and that's not, that's not that has nothing to do with the capacity, it's just how it fits you. Like your shirt size is a small or a large or whatever. Same thing with packs, that they fit your torso. They don't care how tall you are. If you have, you know, really, really long legs and you're six foot and no torso, you're still gonna be a small in backpacks. It doesn't really, it's not a good indicator. If you're really tall, you don't always need a really tall backpack. These come in small, small medium, and large. Or they're like this pack, and they're just fully adjustable. So instead, you can kind of see where they indicated the small size, the medium. If I brought this up to the Velcro, it'd be something like a large. And what's nice about these adjustable packs is that they're all, you can fine tune them. If you are a, a small medium, you know, you either get a small or medium in a lot of pack worlds. With this, or something like this, you can just kind of get every last detail perfect. Um, which is pretty typical. Most packs, I'd say, have some adjustability, if not fully adjustable. This pack doesn't come in any size. It's just goes from small to extra large, and you just kind of keep going with it. Um, but fit is really important. I uh, got this pack on. And a lot of people, they think, right off the bat, when people try to try on packs, um, they put it on. And they think it's too tall because the hip belt's way down here. And that's that's not how it works. You always put the hip belt where you need it to go. If the pack's too big on me, I kind of look where the, the shoulder straps are falling. This is gonna be my indication of how the pack fits and feels, or if it fits me or not. This is always in the right in the, in the same place. Uh, it's always in the right place. You never have a pack that's too low or it's way too high on me, that, that just means that the shoulder straps are gonna fall on you wrong. So, the idea is um, you want the straps to kind of curve around, around you a little bit so that they, they actually connect to the pack, maybe an inch or two below your actual shoulder blade. I should have left this stuffed. way this is going now, I think, and I feel how it kind of goes straight, maybe goes up a little bit, or it just goes straight into the pack. That's, that's usually not what I want. I want this thing to kind of curve around and hug me a little bit more than just being a, you can see how it would be kind of an issue, some issues if this isn't fit properly. The weight in here, you can kind of see how it, curve, it goes down. So a little bit of space is okay. If I have a little bit of gap up here, when there's weight in there, it'll kind of go down and it'll disappear and won't be crushing my shoulders anymore. Uh, but if too much space and you get a lot of wobbling, just things are rubbing you the wrong way. You can see the straps are kind of cut in a certain way. So if these are falling uh, a way that's not intended, you can get a lot of issues, discomfort. Excuse me. Yeah. Subject, are you going, if we have a 
pack in the car after the class just to check that it's... Yeah, yeah, bring it in, we'll fit you. Okay. Um, does anybody want to talk about anything else that we didn't discuss yet? I'm kind of off the cuff here, but yeah. What are there, in terms of like the water of life, like the platypus, mm -hmm. we somehow got a three liter one, mm -hmm. and we, she never carries three liters, so all the water is like, you fill it halfway full, it's all in the bottom, which mm -hmm. I gather is where it shouldn't be. So would, what's the ideal size for like a, a Viva 50, like a two liter? Well, the water falling to the bottom is gonna kinda happen with almost, as soon as you drink some, it's gonna fall, the whole water falling to the bottom thing, that's Well, kinda... it's three liters, if you use one and a half, of course the water, sure. you fill it up, the water's... I mean, uh, that happens even if you only got a one and a half liter bottle, or bladder, and you drink a liter of it, all that, that half liter's still gonna be at the bottom. Right. I would say you did the right thing by going with something that's too big, then too small. Uh, yeah, you can <coughs> fill it two liters, but it gives you the option to fill it up to three, which is pretty sweet, especially on a hot day around here if you're going after like a 10 hour day again. Water bottle, That's great. Um, it's that kind of works. Too heavy. Yeah, you know, a lot of this water is the heaviest thing you're carrying, so a lot of people bring a filter. Instead of carrying like liters or gallons of water, we'll carry maybe two liters and refill, you know, every few hours or however, however long it takes. Uh, the whole three liter versus two, and but only needing two, that kind of plays into what I was saying before, which is it's okay to have a little bit of excess. That three liter bladder probably weighs a few ounces more than your two liter bladder, but it gives you more options. And, and because it's so it's so much bigger, it kind of um, it, fold, it folds and forms around all your other gear a little bit more. Instead of making this kind of cylinder shaped bladder, you know what I mean? It kind of squishes and it forms all those little loose and cranes that it wouldn't if you just had this filled to the brim cylinder of a camelback. You did the right thing. That's your, oh, it's a lot I better. I think that was your advice. Good. <laughs> At least I'm consistent. <laughs> um, yeah. Anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, what's up? Um, can you talk about the bear canister a bit? Oh, it right, seems like it's an awkward thing to try. <laughs> this is an awkward thing. Uh, it's awkward and heavy. Um, and like I said, the heavy things, like what I would do with this is put it right where, as close to me, as close to my spine, not too high up, not too low down, where I would say you're, you're, you're putting your bladder, where I had all my food and the diagram, food, water, all that stuff, just pretend this is a stuff sack and just treat it like that. You could strap it on the outside. Something like this is so awkward, it's so bulky, it's so heavy. Definitely, it would be nice to strap it on the outside. Just it's really heavy, so we kind of want that as close to us as we can get it. And then oh. maybe that plays in to the other stuff being having the bigger stuff sacks. So you have the one thing that's a defined awkward yeah. shape, and the other stuff fits around it a little easier. Yeah, this is definitely a pain to deal with. And I know a lot of places you have to, especially out west, if you ever go Olympic or anything like that, they, they make you carry one of these. You have no choice. You can't do a bear bag. And it's a pain. Um, the best thing you do is kind of cut your losses and just put all you, you can in here, your stove, your cook set, anything you might need when you need it all, when you all you, you're gonna cook or whatever. You put it all in there and put it as close to your spine, as close to your back in the center of the pack as you can get it. Uh, basically just pretend that this little diagram, the food and water thing, this, this is your food and water block in that case. Your bladder will still fit in there if you use one of the wise water bottles, same deal. Yeah, they definitely are a pain to handle. And this is a small one. They, they only make bigger from here, pretty much. Um, yeah, they're a pain. And if you ever try to strap one of those on the outside, you'll notice really quickly that they're very smooth and they like to move around and they'll, they'll probably fall out of your pack no matter how tight you made it. For good reason, they don't want the bear carrying it off, but it kind of doesn't work for us hikers too well either. Yeah, I hate dealing with them. I know. <laughs> Anything else? Anybody? Uh, all right. Well, that's pretty much all of my um, all my notes that we went over already. I don't think I missed anything. 
Does anybody have like problems or anything like in particular they're having problems with with their packs? Like your your friend's not packs not fitting her properly. It's doing something weird. Anybody else have any kind uh, of yeah. specific questions instead of general general questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, weighing packs. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen people. You know, you have a like a scale thing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking we should get one of those. Can you talk about, you know, when you hang the pack from it? Sure, it. they have scales. I would really recommend everyone, even if you're just doing overnights, uh, to weigh your stuff. Don't just assume and make uh, calculations based on what you think it weighs. Weigh everything. Put it on your pack and weigh the pack. Um, do you, you have just weigh scale? individual stuff. Do you sell that? We do. We sell uh, one particular scale where you uh, you can hang. Right. And hold it. You've seen it, I'm sure. Yeah, you just hang it and it tells you how much the thing weighs. That's great. It definitely uh, it definitely helps put in perspective that you wouldn't think that this thing weighs four pounds. You know, maybe you're saying, oh, it's two, and then this is two, and this is two. But before you know it, really, you're carrying 20 pounds and you think it's 10. Um, and it really puts into perspective of things that maybe I can make something smaller. Maybe I can get rid of this thing that weighs more than I thought it did. If any of you have access to a scale, really, I would, I would weigh all your gear. A lot of us have spreadsheets of all our gear, and how much everything weighs. Um, it really helps a lot, uh, determining if something's really important, if you really should bring something, or if you've just you've never used it and you're bringing it around, it's dead weight at that point. Yeah, I would definitely recommend weighing your stuff and getting a better idea. What's up? Most of everything that you the, like, the advice you've dispensed today is mostly for like over night trips, mm -hmm. more than one night. Is there a difference in terms of how you would pack for just like a simple day trip or is that dependent on where you're going? Really the day trip stuff, a lot of this is very lenient. There's no right, wrong or anything like that. Especially if you're with a day pack or day hiking, it's, it's really lenient. Really you can kind of bring whatever makes you feel safer if you, uh, Again, the, the idea is that you can access this stuff quickly. I mean, mm -hmm. If you're bringing stuff for a day hike, you probably plan on using it, or you know, at some point, you're not just bringing stuff. Besides a first aid kit, maybe, it's, it's mostly there to be used. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much you need for a day hike. Like a lot of people will say bring a knife, a compass, a map, a little first aid kit. Um, here's a good example, like a first aid kit like this. There's a lot of stuff, this is pretty big. If I I don't know how to use half this stuff. Um, I'm bringing it, you know, or a lot of people bring it. So I, I either need to do a lot more research on how on first aid in general, or I should just cut it down to maybe band-aids, aspirin, and you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the, the only things you really need are your, your snacks, your water, water is always the, the heavy thing that you really can't go too far without. Um, otherwise it should look pretty much just like that, uh, like the top part of your, your backpacking pack. So this, you know, <laughs> my bug spray, my rain jacket, or extra layers, like a fleece or something like that, or, you know, my rain jacket, um, snacks, and water, map of the area. Like like the first aid kit, it's probably better to know and be resourceful instead of just overcompensating and bringing something like this. I don't even know how to use half of it. I'm really just using the band-aids most of the time. If I really need something like that, I'm probably just gonna hightail out of the woods and get real help, you know, at that point. I would definitely prepare to uh, get lost. I would say bring a headlamp, make sure you know, again, with the compass, it's not something just to bring the compass and map. Know how to use it, know where you are on the map, know how a compass works. Um, it's too late to read up on things when you're out there like that and you don't know how it works. It's definitely important to like know how to do something. Um, all these top 10 lists of what to bring in the woods, usually you'll, you'll find a knife as one of them. This is more than enough. Uh, you're either gonna be uh, opening your freeze dry packets of food or cutting an onion or something like that. You, you know, you're not gonna fend off a bear with this thing, you know? So you, it doesn't need to be this big bushcraft knife or anything. Um, those little Victorinox classics with a knife this big, it's perfect. Is more than enough unless you plan unless you know what you're doing you want to do some bushcraft out there make marshmallow sticks or whatever you're doing in general you, you probably don't need that stuff you, the, the more you know about what you're doing the less you actually need you 
and just be resourceful instead. Um, <coughs> a lot of this comes with experience too. You know, a lot of this is just like, uh, for a long time what I did, I would just go out every day or every whatever day <coughs> and bring different stuff and try to right. use it or just change things up, just experiment. That, that was a big help for me, is just trying different gears, yeah. putting things <coughs> in different places and seeing what worked for me. What works for me probably won't work for a lot of other people here. It's just, done this so many times, so many different ways that this is just what feels right for me is the way I do things. And like I said, it might not be perfect for you. It just gives you some ideas of maybe how to do things differently. Yeah. Anything else? Any other discussion topics? Yeah, well, um, you guys want to fit a backpack? You guys want to okay. any kind of hand? We can get hands on with this stuff if you guys want. Otherwise, that's my speech. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the backpack. Yeah, grab it. We'll fit. Guys, real quick, we have more. This is like the uh, second part of a um, our college series. Um, we have a bunch more events kind of planned. So. Be sure to check out our Facebook page and Eventbrite. All the stuff is on there. If you register, we have a better idea how to accommodate the size of the group. But I'm going to give you guys all a little flyer that has our upcoming events. We have a uh, hike with Solomon and Sunto um, up near the Mohawk Reservation. And then we also have a second Map and Compass Navigation class with our Map and Compass expert there, Steve. And we also will do probably a demo. Take us out in the field and show us how to use those skills and apply them. And then we have our last event of the year will be a cold weather camping. Uh, tip and trick seminar. So I'll give you guys a couple of these. Stay tuned. Tell your friends. Uh, college gets better from here. <laughs> Thank you very much. There you go. Take a there. There you go.